So hopefully you've made it through all our views and our course so far of the point of care ultrasound or echo course at the bedside. And now we want to look at left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, so I briefly want to show you, you know, findings that you could see, views that you can use to identify uh, left ventricular hypertrophy and go from there. Okay, we won't go into much more details. We'll do that in our course outside of this, but I want to give you a good idea of what you're looking for. Okay, so the main things, there's not a whole lot here, um, but I want you to assess LVH or left ventricular hypertrophy in a few different views. And I'll show a couple of them here. Okay, and the one I want to look at first is this parasternal long access view. Okay, this one here. And I've also given you the depiction down here of the structures that we can see. If you're not familiar with any of these views, make sure you can go back and listen to all our lectures where we go through how to position the transducer in order to obtain each view and what structures we are identifying in each view. Okay. Otherwise, let's continue. So notice here we have our parasternal long axis view and what we have at most anteriorly is this right ventricular outflow tract which is this one here okay our f our lv our left ventricle is this one here okay so notice that there and what we're looking for in left ventricular hypertrophy is hypertrophy of the ventricular walls okay so i'll erase this and i'll, I'll show you so notice that we have our walls here and this here is normal and this is one that's going to show left ventricular hypertrophy so notice we have our lv here and this is the wall that's surrounding it okay and this is our interventricular septum in this region here. Notice in the picture that shows LVH, okay, the wall has thickened quite a bit, okay, and so has the interventricular septum. So notice that. And the LV cavity is now smaller. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll erase that so you can see that. So notice the difference in size between them. This here, okay, compared to this cavity in this region. Okay, so that's what I want you to look for, that thickening of the left ventricle wall. There's also another view that we can see here in the parasternal short axis view at the papillary muscle level. Okay, again, if you don't know how to get to this level, make sure you go back and listen to the lecture. What we're seeing here is that we have the LV right here. Okay, you have your interventricular septum. Okay, and the right ventricular outflow tract ahead of it. But notice in, so this is the normal depiction of it. The one that shows LVH, actually you can see market thickening of the LV wall. Notice from almost here to here, you have this thickening of the left ventricular wall. Okay, and notice it compared to um, over on this side. Okay, not so much. In this case, you can barely see what's on the other side okay of the right side so notice how thickened that left ventricle is that's what you want to be looking for in this last view that we're going to show here this is the apical four chamber view okay the apical four chambers okay again go back and listen to the lecture where we go to how to find this view but we'll briefly review this okay so notice this is our left ventricle okay and this is the normal depiction left ventricle and here we have our left atrium and on this is the right side where we have a right atrium and the right ventricle so obviously we're going to focus here on the lv and notice this is normal normal left ventricle and then notice here the one that's actually showing lvh the thickened left ventricular left ventricular wall okay so notice the difference in those i'll erase it here so you can actually see that again but notice that much thicker here on the right side the one that's showing left ventricular hypertrophy okay you can see that this cavity is actually much bigger over here compared to this one in this region okay notice the thickening of the left ventricular walls so that's what you're really looking for okay we've gone through three different views we looked at the parasternal long axis view and remember notice how we saw that thickening of that left ventricular wall okay notice this here's the left atrium and then this is the um, aortic valve the outflow track in this region so we're focusing on that cavity and notice the thickening of those walls that we saw okay this is the lv cavity 
And then we saw the same thing in the peristernal short axis view, another view where we saw the thickening of the left ventricular wall. Okay, in the apical four chamber view, another view that you can see it and notice that thickening of the left ventricle. Okay, the wall is thickened, the cavity is getting smaller. Okay, and hopefully you can see that there. So, again, the goal of this was to show you a few different views that we can uh, identify and look for left ventricular hypertrophy at bedside when we're evaluating our patients. Okay, and that can help us to look and uh, help our differential diagnosis of what's going on. Maybe the patient has pretty bad hypertensive disease that's causing pretty bad uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So Go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them.
All right. Have a great day.